When the aggressor has a long range tool like a firearm, running away is not a great option. Welcome to today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Costa Rica. The new Mantis X10 firearms performance system has all the goodness of the original, plus holster draw analysis and recoil analysis. It's a fantastic upgrade and I recommend it highly. Sped up the beginning for the sake of time. This dude, you can see it's 8.30 at night and he's just hanging out. I'm not sure what the, the business is he's hanging out outside, but this is a side street. You can see not busy at all. There's hardly anybody around. In fact, nobody around. He's just waiting. Now you're gonna see this car roll by him and he's got his phone in his hand looking at his phone. Dude jumps out with a gun and when he tries to run off, they shoot him right in the back. Now he tosses his phone towards the guy. So the guy just decides, oh, okay, I'm gonna grab your phone. That's what he was after. He was after a phone and shot the guy in the back for a cell phone. Now this guy who has been shot in the back is now going to wave and, and try to get some help. But of course this car that's next to him didn't see that happen. So they keep on going, but the bystander here apparently did. He's going to try to wave them down as well. I don't have any follow-up information about what ended up happening to the victim, but that's where this one ends. Going to be some interesting lessons out of this one on multiple levels. What would you say some of them are? Leave me a comment in the description. Let me know before you watch it, what you think the lessons are, then watch it through and see how right you are. Let's get to them, shall we? First thought here is let's pay attention to the fact that this is a kind of an isolated area. So an isolated area can be a spot where bad guys like to attack if they have access to it. So I don't know that this would normally be called a transitional space, but the, definitely here on the sidewalk and the fact of the matter is that this guy sees, ah, these guys can get in and get out and they're isolated. No witnesses around makes it an enticing target. Now, another thing I wanna pay attention to, notice that our victim here has his phone out in a public space and he's paying attention to his phone. Notice that that makes him drop his head and not see what's going on in his world. Can't tell you enough, your smartphone is a valuable item. It, it is a signal to bad guys. Here, I have some valuables, would you like to take them? So I can't tell you enough, I really strongly encourage, keep your cell phone in your pocket when you're out in public, specifically when you're in a transitional space, if at all possible. And the fact of the matter is that gives them a signal that says, aha, we can attack this guy with relative impunity. Now they do, and he runs away, but notice that he doesn't have any cover here. He doesn't have anywhere that he's going to. He's just trying to gain distance. Well, normally if you can get more than about 15 yards from a bad guy, okay, fine. They probably couldn't hit the broad side of a barn, but proximity negates skill. And therefore, when you, you've got a close bad guy who launches an attack from a position of surprise, and if you can't get away from him quickly, this is a poor technique. This is a poor chance that you're taking here to try to run away from somebody because he might very well just shoot you in the back. Now, most bad guys aren't that evil, but real evil like this does exist. I do notice that our victim here tosses his phone and that was actually a good tactic, tosses it in the direction of the bad guy, but past him that gets the bad guy thinking about something else. If you really did want the phone, there it is, man. Just keep on trucking and leave me alone. And that, that did work in this case. The bad guy ran off with his stuff. Now I do want us to notice as well, evil like this does exist, guys that we don't think about that. We think, well, you know, if a bad guy shows you a gun, just give him what he wants or whatever, and he's probably not going to hurt you. That might be the case, but real evil like this really does exist and really does say, hey, wait a minute, I'm willing to kill you to take your life, to shoot you in the back, just to take your cell phone that I might make 50 or 100 bucks for. Remember, that's the value that you are worth to some people's eyes. So they run off, oh, okay, great. Now he is gonna try to flag this first car down, but quite frankly, they haven't seen what's going on. Had you just seen somebody laying in the street and waving you down, is that a good risk for you to step in on? Well, you gotta decide what third party encounters you're gonna step into and what you're not. I think that in some places and at some times, maybe stopping and rolling the window down a little bit and saying, hey man, are you okay? Do you need help? And if the guy says, hey man, I've been shot, I need some help. And if you've got a high level of skills and equipment on you and those things, Maybe you can, but I don't necessarily blame him for not helping. You were pretty much on your own. Now, thankfully, this bystander who seemed to, did seem to see the whole thing and see this guy get shot, realizes he's a victim, starts to try to help as well. Final thing here, make sure that no matter where you are, that you keep your first aid equipment on your person and keep your first aid skills strong. Even when you're not in the US, I carry my first aid equipment with me literally all over the world. My wife and I love to travel internationally and nobody has a hard time with first aid equipment on your person anywhere you go. So make sure you've got that stuff because you may need it to help somebody big time. Let's pay attention in transitional spaces. Let's make sure that we understand the nature that, uh, of the attack that we might face. Let's see that what our tactics are have to matter. So only run when it's the best option and make sure that your first aid skills and equipment are with you to cover your ass. 